On the 22nd of June 1985, a 33-year-old mother of seven disappeared from her home in a small town in Galway. She seemed to simply vanish from her own couch. This is the disappearance of Barbara Walsh. Barbara Walsh, born Barbara Lydon, was born on the 20th of July 1951, so she was just a month short of her 34th birthday. She was born on Minish, which is a like a little small island just off Karna, which is a small town in Connemara in Galway. She was the youngest of eight. She was five foot eight, uh, of medium build, and had brown hair. She married her husband, MacDara Walsh, in her late teens, and they spent a brief time in England, but other than that, Barbara had spent her entire life in Connemara. The couple lived in Rasheen Namanak, which is a small area in a small town called Karna in Connemara in Galway. Uh, Rasheen Namanak is right along the coastline, it's really small. According to Wikipedia, there's only like 178 people living in Karna, so it just gives you an idea of how small the town is. Connemara, if anybody doesn't know, is a Gaeltacht region in Ireland, so that means that they speak us Gaelga, they speak Irish, they, the, the natural tongue there is not English. Barbara was very close to her mother and she became a mother herself in her late teens. Um, she would give birth to nine children on Christmas Eve in 1973. Unfortunately, um, their twin daughters, Irene and Rita, died of SIDS at just three weeks old. Barbara was described as being fun, but a hard worker. She was also described as a very loving mother and proud. I'm just going to read um, two quotes out from a primetime interview in uh, 2017 on RTE. Her neighbour, Michal Coyne, said, uh, Barbara was a nice, pleasant girl, jolly going, always had a smile on her face. She'd have the chats, she'd have the laugh and the crack with me. Her daughter, Jackie, who was actually 14 at the time of her disappearance, said about her mother, she was fun. She was a good mum. A hard worker when we were all so small. Yeah, she was a good mum. In the 80s in Ireland, uh, there was a recession. There was a there was huge emigration um, to England and to America and to Australia. Um, the family, however, were pretty self-sufficient. They grew potatoes and other vegetables. They had cows. Um, the father, MacDara, uh, was a seaweed harvester and he also done fish farming. They had lived in this house on their land until the council actually built them a house on the land. Um, it had running water unlike their previous home um, and Barbara was said to be very proud of this. At the time that she disappeared the family didn't have a phone and they didn't have a car. When Barbara disappeared she had seven children five girls and two boys, ranging from the ages of 17 years just down to nine months old. So on the 21st of June, the family and some friends gathered at Tig Moran, which was the local pub in Karna. Um, MacDara's sister Catherine was home from America and his brother Patrick was home from Australia and they were leaving soon so this was kind of like a last hurrah with them um after the drinks in the pub apparently some went back to the Walsh home for tea and sandwiches and this included a priest and two off-duty guardian the neighbor Miha would say that barbara was in good spirits and that she was laughing and joking with people barbara's eldest daughter catherine had actually been out at the time and so she arrived back and found her mom in the kitchen you know um her mom would, you know, her mom said, like, give us a hand making the, the tea and sandwiches. So she did and helped her serve them out to everybody. They said, you know, there was a bit of a sing song going on and um, everything seemed grand. Jackie, who I mentioned earlier, had, was 14, remembers her mom bringing a friend into their room. So she shared a bed with uh, Catherine and the youngest, Andrea. And the Barbara had brought the friend in to see Andrea because she hadn't seen her before. And she said something like, you know, oh, like, she's gorgeous. I could just run away with her. And Jackie remembers her 
man saying, um, oh, no one will have my Andrea. And this will be the last thing that she, she hears her mom saying. The party must not have been loud because Jackie said after that, they don't remember like hearing much noise. They must have been able to go to sleep. And the party continued until the early hours of the next morning. But uh, details kind of of what happened are pretty unclear. When the party ended, um, McDara's sister Catherine left with some other guests, maybe to head off somewhere for more drinks or something. And uh, Barbara fell asleep on the couch while McDara was asleep upstairs. They're not sure if maybe she was waiting for Catherine to come home and, and fell asleep on the couch. Jackie uh, said that she woke just after around uh, four or five o'clock in the morning. She said she doesn't know why she woke, but she went downstairs and saw her mother on the couch. She said she tried to wake her and she couldn't. So she got a pillow and blanket out of the press and put a pillow under her head and blanket over her and went back up to bed. The aunt Catherine did arrive home at some point and left again the next morning um, because they said that her heels had been left by the door and the next morning when the children got up the heels weren't there anymore and uh, when they got up the next morning their mother was not there either. There's different sources um, some of the newspaper articles make it seem like they thought that the mother had gone into town with their father um, because that was the normal routine to go into Karna and that it was only when he arrived home without her that they realised that you know she wasn't with him that there was something wrong but in the primetime interview that I mentioned uh, Kathy, Catherine and Jackie said that that was the reason their dad went into Karna was because when they woke up um, the man wasn't there and he he just thought you know maybe she's gone into Karna because that's what they done on the Saturday and so he went into Karna had a look around he couldn't see her he went to Minish, which is where Barbara's mother lived. She wasn't there either. And went to where uh, Barbara's father lived because her parents were divorced. And she wasn't there either. And Jackie and Catherine said that they stayed at home minding the younger children. The children were almost immediately um, sent off to stay with an aunt while the adults, their dad, figured out what was going on and tried to deal with it. Because Barbara disappeared so suddenly and for, you know, for no reason at all, her family assumed that maybe she would just reappear as suddenly and unexplainably as she had disappeared. After a week, when there was still no word from her, MacDara went to the Garda station in Karna and officially reported her missing to one of the Garda that had been at the party. So on the RTE primetime report, there's a snippet of the um, missing persons report. I haven't been able to find any more information anywhere else. So this is this is all I have to go on. Um, obviously, it has the usual description, you know, her physical features and stuff. It says that she's a heavy smoker and um, likes to drink. She likes to drink, as the Irish say, and that she would occasionally complain about a pain in her chest, but would refuse to go see a doctor. Typical Irish as well, to be grand. Then the report mentions, and they don't highlight it on the primetime report, that Barbara went, uh, you know, went missing before, that she had left before, but returned after a week. So I can only assume that this is this might have been why MacDara waited so long um, to report her missing, because if she had done it before and came back, maybe he just thought she'd done it again. Maybe she needed time away or something like that. And then it also said that she had um, £600 in her possession when she left. So I'm not sure if he meant physically on her or he knew that she had it saved somewhere and, and couldn't find it after or something. I'm not sure. It also mentioned that she had brothers and sisters in England. That's really all the information we have from the snippet of the missing persons report. The Gardaí took a statement from Jackie in her home with her dad present and just asked about seeing her on the couch and asked had she been breathing and Jackie said she just looked asleep she didn't look as if there was anything wrong with her um, Barry Cummins the investigative journalist in the uh, for the primetime um, asked 
you know, when you put the, the pillow under her head, do you know that, she, like, was she breathing? And again, she said, yeah, she was warm, like, you know. Jackie says that um, when she woke up that night, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. And she kicks herself for not, you know, trying to wake the man more or waiting down there with her, you know, to see, see what was up, what was happening. And I can't imagine that that guilt that she probably has to this day. Um, she mentioned that she never sleeps on the couch and she'd never let any of her children sleep on the couch. But like she was 14, she was a child. This, this, the guilt is not hers. It's this, this is not on her. So apparently no one asked the aunt Catherine if she had seen Barbara on the couch that night because we know that she had returned at some point, left her heels at the door. And the next morning she was gone and the heels were gone. And obviously the children were young. They weren't going to ask at the time. And the aunt left pretty soon after to go back to America. So again, this was never asked. And that aunt has since died. So the children all grew up thinking that their mother had left. Um, a year after her disappearance, Barbara's father had died. And, and they really thought that she would she would come home for this. And she didn't. Jackie says that, you know, they did grow up thinking that their mother left them and it was only when she went on to have her own children that she began to question it. And she just knew that she just knew her mother would not have left their ch her children. After Barbara's disappearance, it became the talk of the town. But for some reason, uh, the Gardaí didn't seem to want to like make a thing out of it. They weren't very eager in asking for the public's help or information. So in the July, um, Barbara's brother and sister, Paul Rigg and Mary Lydon, contacted Martine O'Cahan. I'm Irish and I know I'm going to get some of these pronunciations wrong. Um, he was a journalist and he would be the first one to make any type of broadcast about her disappearance. And so they contacted him in July and they basically said their sister was missing and that the guardy didn't seem to be bothering to do anything or, or take much notice of the fact that she was missing. Martin uh, speak, spoke to the guards and they said to him that it was very difficult to know when someone was missing. They said because you or I as adults are allowed to just get up and leave and disappear without telling anyone where we're going, that we're allowed to disappear. They advised that it would not be appropriate to make any type of public report at this stage. Barbara was missing almost a month. I think the Gardaí and even MacDara, Barbara's husband, believed that she had just left, that she had, you know, just left on her own accord. And for such a small, you know, traditional Catholic town, this would have been not just embarrassing, but shameful that your wife left you, that she left her children. And so I think the Gardaí thought that she would just turn up alive and well. And apparently there had been uh, rumoured sightings in other parts of Galway. And there was rumours that she, you know, left for England, that she left for Australia for a new life. But if she didn't leave of her own accord they were just hindering the investigation by being so private and quiet about it a week or so after martin had um spoke to the local guardi he met a sergeant in clifton garda station who told him that at this point they would not object to a public broadcast on the disappearance even with this it was not it was not big news it was not it wasn't public, it wasn't broadcast nationally. Um, I think it was on Radio Nigel talked and uh, another few little bits. I think it was October before it even made a crime line, crime call. One of the aspects of this was probably that uh, there was, you know, national news was busy on June 23rd. So the day after her going missing, an Air India Boeing 747 jet exploded 80 miles off the south coast killing 329 passengers and, and crew on board. And on June 27th, so not even a full week later, 
Garda Sergeant Patrick Morrissey was shot dead by two armed men in a robbery in Laos. So like the news went, you know, stuck for stories. So they went really, I suppose, going out and even trying to find stories to, to talk about. And so I don't know if this is one of the reasons that her case didn't get the attention it deserved. So at the time they did do, you know, some sort of investigation. Some people were interviewed, some statements were taken, they checked hostels in Galway City because again, I think they thought that she just left. One of the problems was that even though Karna is a Gaeltacht region, as I said, all the uh, statements were taken in English. So there's the worry now that uh, when they were being translated, that there was stuff lost. There could have been vital information that didn't make it through. And some of those people now, have, you know, have, have passed on. The family believe that the Gardaí at the time did not do enough. Catherine and Jackie said that they thought about their mother every day, but they quickly learned not to mention her around their dad, Macdara, because it was too painful for him. He would get upset anytime they did ask where the mom was, when she was coming home. So they, they learned to keep those questions to themselves. Um, another relative said that he, he didn't mention her or refer to her any time after that ever again. The children say that McDara was a, a good father and that he, he went on to be a good grandfather. They said um, Christmas was particularly hard for him, even though he tried his best to, you know, keep, keep Santa alive for the, for the children. All the children grew up and most have stayed in Connemara. McDara uh, died after an illness in 2007, aged 67. In 2015, the family were invited to um, a missing persons memorial. The Garda Commissioner Noreen O'Sullivan made a speech and spoke about how uh, no stone would be un left unturned for a missing persons case. And so the family decided to write to her and ask for her to reopen the case. And she did. For the first time in 30 years, the case got national attention. So now the Gardaí are investigating whether uh, Barbara Walsh was murdered. They said that she made plans with one of the friends at the party that she would meet them on the Monday. She also had poor eyesight and her glasses were left behind. The home, the outhouses and the land, the farm and the land were uh, actually dug up and cadaver dogs were brought in from the UK to uh, investigate. They also searched the nearby lakes, there's, there's different lakes and stuff around. This search lasted for five days, but when the cadaver dogs were brought in, Jackie asked for the Gardaí to search a particular part and they told her they couldn't and that they would need to ask for permission to do so. It's now 2020 and I don't, I haven't found any more information on that. So I don't know that were they not just bothered to ask for the permission? Did they not? Was it denied? I don't know. All these searches found nothing. The new investigation, however, brought 114 lines of inquiries and 17 written statements. Contact was made with Interpol and the Gardaí also checked with the passport office and Barbara Walsh did not hold a passport in her married name, her maiden name or her name Oscalga. So during these investigations, Gardaí were told that there had been a verbal argument between Barbara and her husband. And that shortly after this, the party ended and people left. Apparently, it may have actually started over at the pub. Some heated words were exchanged about who was allowed to come back to the house and that the argument then followed up again once they were in the house. Gardy have interviewed those who are still alive. And if anything else happened while people were present, it's not known. There was no sign of a struggle. Um, so Gardy don't believe that like someone came in and, and dragged her out. There was a rumour that Barbara might have been romantically involved with someone and, you know, like was this the plan to go to go meet them early that um next morning? Or that someone could have taken an interest in her and did they somehow, you know, lure her out of the home that night, unsuspecting? Gardy say they know that there was a man who is still alive who was living in Karna at the time, 
who has since gone on and been convicted of sexually assaulting a girl in a different part of Ireland. That's all there really is with this investigation. Unfortunately, there's really not a lot to it. I had never heard of this case before. Some, <clears throat> some thoughts that I have on it. Ireland in 1985, in general, would have been very traditional, very Catholic, very tight-knit. And in such a small little area like Karna, you can, you can bet that that was magnified. And so do I think there are people who know more in the town or people who were at the party? Most likely. McDarrett, I think, is obviously, the husband is always like a suspect. And, you know, especially if they had had an argument that night, could things have escalated? Maybe, you know, not on purpose. But I think for him to have done something on his own to her, they didn't have a car. And I think it would have been very difficult to get rid of her. The searches have shown that there was nothing on their own land. So if something did happen to her, you would have to think that it was further out or in the part that Jackie wanted searched. And then you wonder why Jackie wanted that search. Does she have an inkling or does she have a feeling or has she heard a rumour about something that has happened and that the person who owns that land is involved? I don't know. I feel like maybe the sister, the aunt, Catherine, knew something. This was her brother. So if something had happened, maybe she wouldn't. I don't know, like, would you? In that, in that, in that, uh, time period in those type of traditions and and closeness I suppose would you would you rat on your brother I don't know I feel it's I find it I find it so suspicious that she just left without anybody you know anybody finding out did she did she see Barbara on the couch that night or was she gone by that point did she hear anything did she see anything outside the house I don't know it also says that Catherine was there with her partner in Ireland. So her partner was at the party. So when she left with other people, I'm assuming that her partner also went. I was wondering, uh, after the fight, when everyone left, you know, if there was an argument going on, was it kind of a, well, if she was staying in the house, was it kind of an excuse? Well, we'll go to, we'll go to Paddy's for another drink, you know, to let them kind of, resolve whatever needed to be resolved that could be that could be a thing because that is something you would do you'd be like oh no, no I'll just pop to the shop or I'll just do whatever just to leave you guys to settle this and then when I come back it's supposed to be sorted Um, I do have a dark thought that I think something woke Jackie up whether it was a scream or a bang or a shuffle or something but I think that she woke up and she just didn't realise you know you just wake up and by the time you come to your senses you don't realise that there was a noise and I the dark thought in my head would be that when she went downstairs Barbara was on the couch but that Barbara was not alive and then obviously when your head just runs I don't know like did McDara or someone else maybe do something you know had they strangled her suffocated her Something that if you then heard someone coming, if they heard the daughter coming down or, you know, they heard Jackie coming down, if they were to, you know, put her on the couch and make it look like she was sleeping, I don't know. Um, and I don't think, I don't think a 14 year old would even think that type of thought to think like when they don't wake their mom, you know, like if someone's drunk, it's hard to wake them. If they don't wake their mom, I don't think the first thought would be, oh, well, she's, she's dead. There's something wrong with her. I think it would just be off. Oh, Mammy's not waking up. Um, and you have to remember that 14 year olds back then are not like 14 year olds now. They are younger, they are, you know, more innocent. And so something in my head just makes me think like that, that Barbara was not alive when Jackie came down. She went back up and whoever had done something to Barbara, McDara or someone else, then got rid of her. If we're talking about an intruder and there was no sign of a struggle you know if you woke her and she was you know stunned dazed and if you threatened and said you know 
if you, if you don't walk out of here with me, I'm going to kill your kids or something to that effect. How many mothers would go if they genuinely thought that there was a threat to their children? And maybe even think that once you get outside, you can you can escape. Or if it's someone you know that you can talk them out of it. I don't know. Again, these are all just really thoughts in my head. If a couple had had a fight, um, you know, it might make sense that Barbara did stay downstairs then. But she did sleep on the couch and that McDowell stayed upstairs. Maybe that's the simple reasoning to that. And then something happened. Or maybe she did disappear. Maybe that that argument was the last straw and she was just like, affect this and, you know, went. But it never mentions that, you know, like clothing was missing or any valuables, you know, anything that she would have took with her was missing. And I, I trust your kids when they say that they believe that their mother would not have left them. And I know there are cases when that has happened. There was a case... Um, of a woman who is in a, an abusive relationship. I'm not saying that that's what is happening here. But there is a case of um, a woman who was in an abusive relationship. And when she wasn't there, the father was great with the kids. And so she didn't want the children growing up in this horrible situation. And she knew that, you know, she couldn't support them. And so she disappeared. And she knew that by disappearing... The father would be good, he would be nice, and that he would just look after his children. And apparently, like, 30 years later, when he died, she came out of the woodwork and was like, I'm here, I'm alive. I'd say that's a rare thing to happen, but... Like, I don't know, some mothers do horrible things to their children, so leaving might not be completely off the list of possibilities. Detective Inspector Mick Coppinger um, said that he believes the information about Barbara's case, that will solve Barbara's case, is local to Karna. He said, quote, Barbara's children are still waiting for their mother to come home. People have moved on with their lives, but they can't move on. They need their mother. They need her back. They need to account for what happened to their mother. Another quote from Detective Sergeant Colin McDonough. I'm really embarrassing myself if I'm not saying these things right. Quote, Karna is a close-knit Gale Talks community and we believe that there are people in that community who may have information that can help our investigation. We are conscious that we now live in a very different era to 1985 and perhaps now with the passage of time, people may feel more comfortable sharing that information with us. End quote. Her daughter Jackie believes that she was murdered that night. She says, I do think she's had a bad ending. Some, something bad's happened to her. Um, in an article actually from this year, 2020, in extra.ie, I'll put all the links below. Um, Jackie said that she believes one man holds the key to solving this and that the Gardaí have interviewed him a couple of times. And she has said that she actually now goes, uh, intends to go and speak to him herself and ask him questions. Um, the article was from February or March, I think. So obviously with COVID and stuff going on, there's obviously no information on that. I don't know what's happened. I am hoping that maybe she does go. Maybe he would admit after all this time if he does know something. Maybe by seeing her, her daughter. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Finally, I'll just leave you with uh, her daughter, Catherine, said, quote, Mum wouldn't walk out on us. On the seven kids. There's no way. And she said it is never too late. For someone to come forward. And say something. If you happen to have information on this case. No matter how small you think it is. Please contact the Gardaí. I'll, I'll put all the details up now. On the screen. The teeniest information. Can help. So that was the disappearance of Barbara Walsh. Um, again this is a lesser known case it was really hard to actually find any older information on it um, I had never heard of it before there just seems to be so many missing person cases in Ireland that I've just I've never heard of and I am really interested in true crime and so that's just why I want to try to bring a bit of light to them so 
So thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.